you have decided to write a book. You are undoubtedly so excited and rightfully so because it is the story that God has placed on your heart to share. And at the outset, writing and self-publishing might seem very straightforward, right? All you have to do is write a story and click a button to upload it to the print on demand company of your choice. Easy peasy, right? Well, behind every main task, such as writing and self-publishing, are a host of smaller tasks and even subtasks beneath those. And compounding the problem is when you turn to the internet to try to find the answers to your questions and challenges, and you are inundated with information. It's often overwhelming. In fact, the realities of authorship often make aspiring authors turn into one of three types of writers. Are you ready to learn what they are? Well, keep watching and be sure to click that um, subscribe bell below so you don't miss any future videos. All right, so let's dive in. What are those three types of writers? Well, the first type of writer is the quitter. You don't want to be the quitter. The quitters are, they start off strong, but the work intensifies or the challenges materialize and they decide that the author journey is just too bumpy, difficult, or long. And they decide to scrap their story. Okay. The second type of writer is the speedster, right? Speedsters don't care about conventions and quality. They simply rush out of the gate and figure things out on the fly and publish as fast as possible, often with glaring errors throughout their book. You don't want to be a speedster either. So that leaves us with the third type of writer, which is the pacer. Okay. Being a pacer means that you have an end goal in mind and a plan in place. So you have the energy to achieve the end goal. It means that you're willing to put in the work and course correct when necessary. So let's talk about the benefits of being a pacer. Back when I was in high school, a long, long time ago, I was a long distance runner on the track team. And I was trained to set a brisk pace at the outside at the outset and, you know, fall into a comfortable pace behind the lead runner. And that was to conserve my energy until the end of the race, right? So during every race, my coach would stand on the infield with a stopwatch in hand, right? Keeping track of my pace lap by lap. And if I was going too slow, he would yell, pick it up, Daly, no, go faster. And if I was going too fast, which rarely happened, he would say, work on your stride, slow it down. And when that final lap came, the command was always the same. What was it? Go now, give it all I've got, right? So what does all of this have to do with writing your book? A lot, actually. Writing a book requires the same intentionality, accountability, and effort as running a long distance race. Okay. To stand out from the rest of the pack, we have to practice and learn to write well to uh, play to our own unique strengths and develop our unique voice. To reach our readers, which is our finish line, we have to build our platform and market effectively. And to stay on track and not burn out, we need guidance, accountability, and encouragement. And to finish well, we need perseverance. We need to throw off every encumbrance and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with endurance the race set before us as Hebrews 12 1 states. As Christian writers, 
we need to listen for our Father's voice over all the other voices vying for our attention. The world is literally screaming at us from the sidelines to do things against what we have been trained to do. We need to tune the crowd out, listen to God's instructions, and rely on Holy Spirit's strength. Whereas runners often get their second win, wind only in the final stretch, we have Holy Spirit fueling and guiding us throughout our entire writing journey when we invite him in, right? When we are weak, he is strong and he can imbue us with his power to ensure that we cross the finish line. We finish the race. So run, returning to my running analogy, it's also important to consider the following two facts, which is my pace wasn't the same pace as my teammates. And my purpose wasn't necessarily to finish first, but to finish well, right? Sometimes just shaving a second off of my time was the crowning achievement of the race, even if I crossed that finish line dead last, right? And other times just placing third gave my team enough points to win the entire meet overall. It was all about giving each race my all. Likewise, the ultimate prize as a writer, contrary to popular opinion, isn't about reaching number one status on a bestsellers list. That's nice and that it's nothing wrong with achieving that, but it's not the ultimate prize. The ultimate prize is finishing well by faithfully doing the work God has called you to do. By not stopping short of the finish line, go the full distance to market your book to the readers who are waiting, who need your message, your story, whether that's one person or many. Friend, stop considering. Stop comparing yourself to other writers. I know it's easier said than done, especially when we're looking at each other on all the social media platforms, but stop comparing yourself to other writers. Stop listening to the crowd and know that your words do matter. So let me ask you, which of these three types of writers are you. May I encourage you to be a pacer and to God be the glory. So if you like this video, be sure to click that thumbs up below. Be sure to share this video with a fellow Christian writer. Let's keep the sharing and encouragement going. And also be sure to uh, read the description below because I have several free resources for you to help you in your writing and self-publishing journey. And if you would like one-on-one -on -one book coaching assistance, I can help you with that as well. I have um, spots opening up in May, so be sure to check those out and grab your spot before they're gone. All right, stay tuned to this channel. Subscribe if you haven't already, because there are more videos coming your way, more encouragement to help you in your writing journey. Have a blessed day.